Trishula with your Weather Tiger Threat Focus for September 30th. Today's threat is Major Hurricane Matthew, which has intensified rapidly in the past 48 hours. Recon aircraft investigating Matthew this afternoon are finding rapid intensification trends continuing, with sustained winds of over 140 miles an hour, or Category 4 intensity, and the pinhole eye that has developed in the past few hours is indicative of a very healthy storm structure. The storm is located south of Hispaniola today, in an unusually far south position for a major hurricane. Shear is now weak, and the heat content of the Central Caribbean is at near record levels, so continued intensification is possible, and Matthew will almost certainly continue to be an extremely dangerous Category 3 or higher hurricane as it moves close to or over Jamaica, eastern Cuba, and the Bahamas over the next 3-5 to five days. Wind, surge, and rainfall impacts are going to be severe in these areas and surrounding islands, and all interests in the Northwest Caribbean should prepare for the imminent landfall of the region's first major hurricane since Sandy. If you have travel plans to this area soon, do not go. Sorry. The long-term fate of Matthew remains unclear, though the further west track scenarios are becoming less likely as time goes on. In general, models agree that Matthew will move a touch south of due west through tomorrow evening, before turning north as a result of a low over the Ohio Valley shifting east and weakening the western flank of western Atlantic ridging, and be located in the vicinity of the central Bahamas late on Tuesday. At that time, a high latitude block will develop northeast of the storm, in the place of troughing, which may bend Matthew's track back to the west somewhat on days 5 through 7, keeping the hurricane relatively close to Florida or the southeast coast. Another, another frontal boundary approaches the eastern U.S. in about a week, and in the 6Z GFS and many of the 12Z Euro Ensemble and some 12Z GFS Ensemble members, this trough sweeps Matthew out to sea next weekend. However, the 12Z GFS and some 12Z GFS Ensembles hook Matthew back towards New England as it transitions into a powerful extratropical cyclone. To make matters even worse, the 12Z Euro has Matthew simply missing the second front and stalling north of the Bahamas on days 9 through 10. All models show a powerful hurricane through the next week, though Matthew will possibly weaken at least temporarily if it tracks over the higher mountains of eastern Cuba. The keys to this forecast continue to be the timing and strength of that second trough and where Matthew is located when that trough interaction occurs. Frankly, such interactions are too complex to game out over a week ahead of time, but one thing that can be said is that the odds of Matthew reaching the Gulf or continuing westward into Central America have dropped to minimal levels in the past couple days. October tropical cyclone climatology and the preponderance of ensemble output suggest that the most likely eventual forecast track for Matthew is out to sea without making U.S. landfall at perhaps a 60% chance. But to be fair, Matthew's strength and location are already rare, making a historically rare outcome a stronger possibility. Just as a rough estimate, there's perhaps a 15% chance of a Florida, 5-10% to chance of a Carolinas, and a 10-15% to chance of a Mid-Atlantic or New England hurricane landfall. Of course, there can be severe impacts for Matthew even if the center technically stays offshore or if it becomes post-tropical due to the size and strength of the storm. The slight westward trend of the 12Z GFS ensembles around day 5 should also be monitored carefully, especially as Matthew's rapid and unforeseen strengthening calls into question the validity of all forecast models. Anyway, now you know the tropical threat for September 30th. I'll be back on Monday with another full forecast discussion. In the meantime, this is Dr. Ryan Trishlett. Keep watching the skies.